Probably one of my favorite things in a game is boss fights. There's just something really special about facing a boss one-on-one -on -one and overcoming a challenge. So of course I have to get it right in my game. So in this video, let's delve into my thought process while creating this boss fight, as well as explore an interesting approach to designing them. Before that, if you don't know, I'm working on a top-down action roguelike. Think of it as a blend between Hades and Binding of Isaac, with a few unique twists thrown in. If you're interested, go wishlist it on Steam. Okay, back to the topic. Each genre and game has its own approach to implementing boss fights. For instance, in survival games, it's all about having the right build. While in puzzle games, it's about solving some intricate puzzle. There's no right or wrong way to design a boss fight since it's meant to present an elevated challenge based on the game's core gameplay elements. However, certain boss fights stand out as more engaging. Games like Hollow Knight and Dark Souls have boss fights that are high risk versus reward and feature free-flowing combat, where bosses are always open to taking damage. This design allows players to dictate the pace of the fight. Obviously, we can keep looking for other factors like themes, attack patterns, and more to further enrich the experience. It's safe to say that there are many layers to these boss fights, making them incredibly memorable, challenging, and satisfying to overcome. But how do you actually design an engaging boss fight? Especially when looking at these games, it can be really overwhelming to even start. So here's an interesting approach that really worked for me. Designing in layers. By this, I mean we can focus on one layer or aspect at a time. At each layer, we focus on making that aspect interesting and fun. We continue adding layers to make the whole fight fun and consistent with the theme. Let's discuss some of these layers and how I used it to design this boss fight. Starting from theme for the boss, every great boss starts with either a strong theme or a certain game mechanic that you would like to make use of in the boss fight itself and derive the theme after that. In my case, I wanted to fit a boss somewhere in the purple area, so the obvious boss I could think of was some kind of a mage. It would teleport around, do a variety of spells, and it also seemed to fit with the overall lore and theme of the game. Next, decide on the fight loop. In boss fights, the boss usually only has a few limited attacks, which are repeated over and over. The idea behind this repetition is to help the player remember these patterns and plan how to handle them, especially in fast-paced fight, where they have a few seconds to react. But for us game designers, we also need to decide when to execute a particular attack. One simple approach would be to have a stationary boss, which does those sets of attacks over and over. It works and can be fun as well. Things become more interesting and complicated when we decide to move the boss around. Perhaps the boss can determine which set of attacks to use based on the player's distance or its location in the arena. This can create a feeling that the boss is reacting to the player, similar to some of the interesting boss fights seen in Hollow Knight. Or we could give the boss a few fixed positions to move between, as I've done in my case. The fight's loop here essentially involves teleporting into these positions, executing an attack, and then teleporting out. Plus, who doesn't love a boss that turns the fight into a game of whack-a-mole except the mole teleports and fights back? So, to reiterate this point, as it's probably the most important layer in making an engaging boss fight, all the boss's attacks will likely be repeated throughout the fight, with a certain logic determining which attack will be used. Consider how the boss will decide which attacks to prioritize. We could keep it simple and randomly pick an attack base it on the distance from the player, the boss's position in the arena, a combination of these factors, or any other criteria. The possibilities are endless. Decide on boss attacks. To keep the fight engaging, think of a variety of attacks that will keep players on their toes. Having three to four different attacks for a single phase is a good number, as it keeps the fight fresh without overwhelming players with too many attack patterns to remember. However, eventually, it's bound to get repetitive. So when that happens, either the fight needs to end or the boss needs to enter another phase with a few new attack patterns to keep it fresh again. In my game, the mage boss does these three attacks in the first phase, a simple melee swipe for close range, 
a spell that throws three orbs towards the player, spreading out to cover more ground. A chasing orb spell, which might seem harmless due to its slow speed. Players can either deal with it right away, or keep dodging it and risk facing it along with other tricky attacks. In phase two, the attacks intensify and are executed much faster. The boss also has two new attacks, an AOE attack that keeps players on the move, a bullet hell kind of attack where you need to constantly dodge these orbs. We could add another layer by having multiple ways to solve or deal with the attack. Each attack is essentially a puzzle. Once figured out, it can give that amazing feeling of solving it, and it becomes even better if you find another way to solve it. For that orb attack, instead of making it explode on contact, it takes a few seconds to drop to the ground, with which I can not only show the range of the attack, but it also gives players more options to deal with it. Like, players can obviously dash away as it gets close, or they can simply take a step back as it's about to explode, or even better approach would be to simply dash through it and get to the boss to deal more damage. By giving players these multiple ways to deal with an attack can feel rewarding and keep the fight fresh. Next layer or step would be to balance out the fight. Things like adding enough buildup to an attack to ensure the player has enough time to react to it, and giving extra warning to hard hitting attacks will make the fight less frustrating and more fun. Also, the amount of damage a certain attack does is also important. You definitely don't want a cheap attack to do tons of damage. For example, this melee attack might feel a bit out of nowhere, although it has enough buildup. It swiftly punishes players who just rush to attack blindly, especially when fighting it for the first time. Believe me even, I took a lot of those hits. So, I made it so it does less damage as compared to other attacks. And finally, it needs to be properly packaged with maybe start and end cutscenes or animations. Something to give the impression that this encounter is a bit different from others and have players excited for the fight. For example, I have this simple animation and dissolve effect with a few particles to finish the boss fight. Obviously, we could keep adding more layers to the fight, such as music, sound effects, dialogue, and more to create a truly memorable boss fight. But, depending on the genre and type of gameplay, you'll want to focus more on certain aspects than others. Analyzing other boss fights in other games and breaking them down into these layers can reveal what makes them memorable. We can then apply these insights to our own games. Now, as for the actual code implementation, a simple finite state machine approach can work fine. However, I'm using behavior trees. This approach provides the flexibility to visualize the boss's state and keeps the code highly modular and reusable. It also helps in debugging efficiently. Trust me, when you have a complicated boss fight, you need all the help you can get. I don't want to make this video about coding, but you can find great resources on behavior trees on other channels. By the way, if you would like to try out this boss fight and help me with feedback, I am having a playtest on my Discord. Feel free to join. Also, I have more interesting ideas for boss fights in the complete game that I'm sure you will enjoy, so don't forget to wishlist Rogue Resonance on Steam. It really goes a long way in keeping my motivation up as I continue developing this game. And that wraps up this video. If you found it enjoyable, please leave a like. Also, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.